Hey everyone, Paul Daniels here again. Okay, today we have this uh, laptop and it's got a busted screen on it. So hopefully it should be a fairly routine task of replacing the screen. Well, of course we all know how routine tasks tend to go. Alright, this thing we've got. Each laptop screen obviously is, tends to be a little bit different the way they're done. We have little um, screws hidden behind here, I guess. Don't go thinking that text know everything. We usually don't. We just Google everything. <laughs> so, but in this case, it was pretty obvious. There's probably going to be uh, screws behind there. Okay. Now, in most cases, uh, I'll just get these out first. In most cases, the front bezel is extracted by. Um, uh, I'll just uh, get the screws off. <sighs> Sorry. Magnets. Um, yeah, the front bezel is removed just simply by grabbing it from the inside and pulling out like this, usually. I think the hardest thing about doing these is that threshold between too much and just right often isn't a lot <laughs> oh, come on uh, at least the upside is the screen's already damaged anyway uh, the battery's been taken out so I really don't want to damage this bezel let's try from the top yeah there we go you only need one weak spot and then you can take it from there. There we go. So, uh, got a bit of a crack in the puzzle there. That's not from the. Okay, I see what's causing us grief is there's actually tape on the inside. Yeah. Uh, my first initial thought was I'll use the hot air, but then I quickly became sensible and realised that was a dumb idea. We really, oops, sorry. We really don't need hot air attacking this delicate plastic bezel. There we go. Crunching noises are entirely normal. I'm sure a lot of orthopaedic surgeons say that. There we go. There we go. Alright. Marvellous. That's off. Okay. So, so we've got a standard thickness screen here, rather than a slim line, which means we're going to have screws all up the side. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's fine. And natural waffle grip we can make it there. Uh, I have to take these top ones out. If you do start doing screen repairs for yourself like this, uh, just do yourself a favour and make sure you get the screens out before you uh, <laughs> quote on how much it's going to cost, at least initially, because quite often you can get caught out uh, with an incompatible screen or something that you just can't source and believe me it's uh, it's no fun uh, after you've quoted someone trying to then find a replacement screen and you find the screen's hundreds of dollars more than what you quoted for. So there's a lot of cross compatibility between the screens. I mean typically you have your 15.6 inch um, thick screens like this, uh, LED backlight and you really sort of end up with the option of, um, well I'll show you when we get to it, how many pins are on the connector and 
whether you've got a gloss or matte screen. Ah, come on. Almost all screens these days tend to be gloss. Personally, I prefer the matte. Doesn't look quite as fancy in the uh, on the showroom floor, but in terms of everyday use, matte screens tend to win by a wide margin. Okay. Alright, that's good. Pull the screws out. Be gentle taking this out here. Um, you don't want to tear any of the flexes. Okay, yeah, you see, a bit of a trap here. This thing here. So, okay. I want to be careful. It doesn't matter if we do any damage here because this screen's bust, as I said. But we don't want to damage the connector, and I've got the wrong spudger. Where's my good spudger? Oh, it's the other side of the room. Be right back. Okay, I'm back with the right spudger. Honestly, if anyone can find me a replacement of these thin ones, I'd be really grateful. Because all the stockists that I've tried that say, yeah, we've got the thin one, they don't. They've got the thick ones. I'm getting sick of buying the thick ones when I really want the thin ones. Yeah. Alright, just had to carefully take that off. And it's not unusual, they usually... There's a... Uh, just going to move this across a bit. Makes it easier for us. There's always bonding under the last sort of inch of the cable. Don't rip at it, just slowly use it up. Don't force it too far up, those will bend the contacts. There you go. Marvellous. Okay. Well, in this case, this is a pretty standard one, this LTN. 156-8005, but basically the LTN 156s are a dime a dozen. Uh, check on eBay or check with your supplier, whatever. Uh, they're fairly common. The ones that are a little bit trickier is you get the slimline screens and they have the 40 pin connector like this or they have the 30 pin connector and you often get caught out with the wrong one. So if you do this on a regular basis, good reason to stock about three different types. So you have your standard 15 gloss uh, and then your 15 slim 40 pin and your 15 slim 30 pin. You should be right. So with this, uh, let's see. I'm actually, I've got plenty of these. I've got a few refurbished ones. So I'm going to approach the client see if they actually want to do a refurbish rather than the full price original. Mainly because it's an old laptop, at least relatively old and they may not want to spend the full money, so I'll give them the option. If they want to go for the full one, that's fine. Alright, well, thanks for that. Uh, I'll come back when I fit the new screen. Okay, I'm back, and uh, decided we're going to go for the refurbished screen, which, funnily enough, on the one that I had in my stock was a replacement screen I did a while ago, and then the laptop itself actually died. Uh, for other reasons, so I've got to keep it screen. Uh, I've given it a bit of a clean up. It's okay, it's got its usual sort of wear marks, a couple of uh, chafing points, a couple of scratches, but overall it's in pretty good condition. There's no dead pixels, so the customer's going to be quite happy with this one. It's going to look like a pretty normal screen, uh, especially once it's on. You won't really notice those little blemishes, and it uh, saves quite a lot of money compared to the new one. So that's um, not an identical model number, but it's the same um, same technical specifications, so to speak. Everything lines up. That's what matters most. It does work. I know that. Uh, let's see. Let's get these. these connectors are always fun to get back in. You don't want to force them. Uh, more worried about. Uh, Damaging the cable as opposed to the screen. I've got plenty of screens. These cables are a pain in the butt to have to get a replacement of. 
Alright. Is that locked in enough? You gotta make sure you get these locked in pretty good. Make sure there's no gap in the join there. Now, let's see. Let's put some captain tape on it. Keep it secured. And naturally, as usual, can't do that with fingernails too well. There we go. Oh my goodness. Obviously not an exacting science here, but we just... Oh my goodness. It's close to midnight. That's why all the problems are starting. Okay, that's good. I'm not going to connect this up yet. It's lined up. good. Okay, this is obviously just to stop any further blemishes to the screen. Alrighty. Just someone make sure they remind me <coughs> to um, reconnect these before I seal it up. Otherwise I'll be annoyed again. What's going on here? Okay. Time to put all those little screws back in. What's going on here? A slight alignment issue. So once you get the first one or two in, it's pretty easy after that. One down here by the magnet's going to be interesting. Make sure I don't get pulled into it. Oh, good. Naturally, this last one took a bit of a fight to get it. Has to be that, of course. Okay. Tighten these, I loosened those so that I could 
swing the arms back a bit. Give me some room to get those little side screws out. Okay. Alright, now to try and reconnect this. I think it's a microphone connector. There we go. That's good. Just wanna pop out all the time, don't you know? Ah, that's it. It's amazing how many little things of the alignments you don't take notice of when you first pull apart these screens. Good reason to sometimes take photos of everything. Uh, Alright, that's locked in. Good. Uh, at this stage, rather than being presumptuous, we should actually test to make sure it turns on properly and shows the screen. It's good for me. Alright. I didn't want to let it to boot into Windows. Uh, that would be a 10 minute wait doing nothing, waiting for it to finish, and then settling it back down. Okay. Often have to go around the perimeter several times before you, you get them all in. Now you notice I didn't put tape back on this one. Uh, I really prefer not to. It does mean sometimes that the uh, front bezel can lift off a little bit. It's more of a visual thing. I mean, yeah, some dirt could get down there and whatnot, but really putting tape on there is yeah, it's just more drama and doesn't give you that much protection. I mean, the amount of trash that goes down normally anyway. Okay, you there. Or do you? Not good. Lost that second one almost. Okay. Okay, now we can boot up properly. Let's go. Brilliant, just went one. Alright, thanks very much, and I'll see you next time.